After studying this unit, you will be able to describe the formation of different types of solutions, express concentration of solution in different units, state and explain Henry's law and Reynolds' law, distinguish between ideal and non-ideal solutions, explain deviations of real solutions from Reynolds' law, describe colligative properties of solutions and correlate these with molar masses of the solutes, explain abnormal colligative properties exhibited by some solutes in solutions. In normal life we rarely come across pure substances. Most of these are mixtures containing two or more pure substances. Their utility or importance in life depends on their composition. For example, the properties of brass, mixture of copper and zinc, are quite different from those of German silver, mixture of copper, zinc, and nickel, or bronze, mixture of copper and tin, one part per million, ppm, of fluoride ions in water prevents tooth decay, while 1.5 ppm causes the tooth to become mottled and high concentrations of fluoride ions can be poisonous, for example, sodium fluoride is used in rat poison, intravenous injections are always dissolved in water containing salts at particular ionic concentrations that match with blood plasma concentrations and so on. In this unit, we will consider mostly liquid solutions and their formation. This will be followed by studying the properties of the solutions, like vapor pressure and colligative properties. We will begin with types of solutions and then various alternatives in which concentrations of a solute can be expressed in liquid solution. Solution solutions almost all processes in body occur in some kind of liquid solutions. Describe colligative properties of two components. By components, solutions are homogeneous mixtures of two or more than two components. By homogeneous mixture we mean that its composition and properties are uniform throughout the mixture. Generally, the component that is present in the largest quantity is known as solvent. Solvent determines the physical state in which solution exists. One or more components present in the solution other than solvent are called solutes. In this unit we shall consider only binary solutions, i.e., 2008. Type of solution solute solvent common examples gaseous solution. Testing of two components. Here each component may be solid, liquid, or in gaseous state and are summarized in Table 2.1. Composition of a solution can be described, 2018. Type of solution solute solvent common examples gaseous solutions gas gas mixture of oxygen and nitrogen gases liquid gas chloroform mixed with nitrogen gas solid gas camphor in nitrogen gas liquid solutions gas liquid oxygen dissolved in water liquid liquid ethanol dissolved in water solid liquid glucose dissolved in water solid solutions gas solid solution of hydrogen in palladium liquid solid amalgam of mercury with sodium solid solid copper dissolved in gold table 2.1 types of solutions consisting of two com composition of a solution can be described by expressing its concentration the latter can be expressed either qualitatively or quantitatively for example qualitatively we can say that the solution is dilute i.e. relatively very small quantity of solute or it is concentrated i.e. relatively very large quantity of solute but in real life these kinds of description can add to lot of confusion and thus the need for a quantitative description of the solution. There are several ways by which we can describe the concentration of the solution quantitatively. I, mass percentage, W slash W the mass percentage of a component of a solution is defined as, mass percent of a component equals times mass of the component in the solution 100 total mass of the solution, 2.1, for example, if a solution is described by 10% glucose in water by mass, it means that 10 g of glucose is dissolved in 90 g of water resulting in a 100 g solution. Concentration described by mass percentage is commonly used in industrial chemical applications. For example, commercial bleaching solution contains 3.62 mass percentage of sodium hypochlorite in water. 2. Volume percentage V slash V the volume percentage is defined as 
volume percent of a component equals times volume of the component 100 total volume of solution 2.2 for example 10 percent ethanol solution in water means that 10 ml of ethanol is dissolved in water such that the total volume of the solution is 100 ml solutions containing liquids are commonly expressed in this unit for example a 35 percent v slash v solution of ethylene glycol and antifreeze is used in cars for cooling the engine at this concentration the antifreeze lowers the freezing point of water to 255.4 k 17.6 degree c 3 mass by volume percentage with v another unit which is commonly used in medicine and pharmacy is mass by volume percentage it is the mass of solute dissolved in 100 ml of the solution 4 parts per million when a solute is present in trace quantities it is convenient to express concentration in parts per million ppm and is defined as parts per million equals six number of parts of the component times 10 total number of parts of all components of the solution 2.3 as in the case of percentage concentration in parts per million can also be expressed as mass to mass volume to volume and mass to volume a liter of sea water, which weighs 1,030 g, contains about 6 times 10 to 3 g of dissolved oxygen, O2. Such a small concentration is also expressed as 5.8 g per 106 g, 5.8 ppm, of sea water. The concentration of pollutants in water or atmosphere is often expressed in terms of gml, 1 or ppm. V, mole fraction, Commonly used symbol for mole fraction is X and subscript used on the right hand side of X denotes the component. It is defined as mole fraction of a component equals number of moles of the component total number of moles of all the components 2.4. For example, in a binary mixture, if the number of moles of A and B are NA and NB respectively, the mole fraction of A will be XA equals plus AAB NNN 2.5. For a solution containing I number of components, we have 11 equals plus 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 I 1 2 I. N N N N equals I I N N 2.6. It can be shown that in a given solution, sum of all the mole fractions is unity, i.e., x 1 plus x 2 plus plus 11 equals 1. 2.7. Mole fraction unit is very useful in relating some physical properties of solutions say vapor pressure with the concentration of the solution and quite useful in describing the calculations involving gas mixtures. 2000 Calculate the mole fraction of ethylene glycol, C2H6O2, in a solution containing 20% of C2H6O2 by mass. Assume that we have 100 g of solution, one can start with any amount of solution because the results obtained will be the same. Solution will contain 20 g of ethylene glycol and 80 g of water. Molar mass of C2H6O2 equals 12 times 2 plus 1 times 6 plus 16 times 2 equals 62 g mole. 1. Moles of C2H6O2 equals 120 g 62 g mole equals 0.322 mole moles of water equals minus 180 g 18 g mole equals 4.444 mole equals plus 262 glycol 2622 moles of CHOX moles of CHO moles of HO equals plus 0.322 mole 0.322 mole 4.444 mole equals 0.068 similarly equals equals plus water 4.444 mole 0 0.9320.322 mole 4.444 mole x mole fraction of water can also be calculated as 1 to 0 0.068 equals 0 0.932 ex sample 2211 ex sample 2211 example 2.1 6 molarity molarity m is defined as number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 liter or 1 cubic decimeter of solution equals moles of solute molarity volume of solution in liter 2.8 for example 0 0.25 mol l 1 or 0 0.25 m solution of naoh means that 0 0.25 mol of naoh has been dissolved in 1 liter or 1 cubic decimeter 
EX Sample 2222 EX Sample 2222 Example 2.2 Calculate the molarity of a solution containing 5G of NaOH in 450 ml solution. Moles of NaOH equals minus 15 G 40 G mole equals 0.125 mole volume of the solution in liters equals 450 ml slash 1000 ml L1 using equation 2.8 Molarity equals 10.125 mol times 1000 ml L 450 ml equals 0.278 m equals 0.278 mol L 1 equals 0.278 mol dm 3 EX Sample 2233 EX Sample 2233 Example 2.3 S Solohutayo and S Solohutayo in Solution 7 Molality, molality, m, is defined as the number of moles of the solute per kilogram, kg, of the solvent and is expressed as, molality, m, equals moles of solute mass of solvent in kg, 2.9, for example, 1.00 mole kg, 1, or 1.00 m, solution of KCl means that 1 mole, 74.5 g, of KCl is dissolved in 1 kg of water. Each method of expressing concentration of the solutions has its own merits and demerits. Mass percent, ppm, mole fraction and molality are independent of temperature, whereas molarity is a function of temperature. This is because volume depends on temperature and the mass does not. Solubility of a substance is its maximum amount that can be dissolved in a specified amount of solvent at a specified temperature. It depends upon the nature of solute and solvent as well as temperature and pressure. Let us consider the effect of these factors in solution of a solid or a gas in a liquid. 2.3 Solubility 2.3 Solubility 2.3 Solubility 2.3 2.3 Calculate molality of 2.5 g of ethanoic acid, CH3COOH, in 75 g of benzene. Molar mass of C2H4O2, 12 times 2 plus 1 times 4 plus 16 times 2 equals 60 g mole, 1 moles of C2H4O2 equals 1 2.5 g 60 g mole equals 0.0417 mole mass of benzene in kg equals 75 g slash 1000 g kg, 1 equals 75 times 10 to 3 kilograms molality of C2H4O2 equals 242 moles of CHOKG of benzene equals 10.0417 mole 1000 GKG 75 G times equals 0.556 mole kg. 1 in text questions 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 2.1 calculate the mass percentage of benzene, C6H6, and carbon tetrachloride. CCL4, if 22 G of benzene is dissolved in 122 G of carbon tetrachloride. 2.2 Calculate the mole fraction of benzene in solution containing 30% by mass in carbon tetrachloride. 2.3 Calculate the molarity of each of the following solutions, A, 30 G of Co, NO3, 2, 6 H2O in 4.3 L of solution, B, 30 ml of 0.5 mh 2 so 4 diluted to 500 ml. 2.4 Calculate the mass of urea, NH2CO NH2, required in making 2.5 kg of 0.25 molal aqueous solution. 2.5 Calculate, A, molality, B, molarity and, C, mole fraction of key if the density of 20%, mass slash mass, Aqueous key is 1.202 GML1. 2018 Every solid does not dissolve in a given liquid. While sodium chloride and sugar dissolve readily in water, naphthalene and anthracene do not. On the other hand, naphthalene and anthracene dissolve readily in benzene but sodium chloride and sugar do not. It is observed that polar solutes dissolve in polar solvents and nonpolar solutes in nonpolar solvents. In general, a solute dissolves in a solvent if the intermolecular interactions are similar in the two or we may say like dissolves like. When a solid solute is added to the solvent, some solute dissolves and its concentration increases in solution. 
This process is known as dissolution. Some solute particles in solution collide with the solid solute particles and get separated out of solution. This process is known as crystallization. A stage is reached when the two processes occur at the same rate. Under such conditions, number of solute particles going into solution will be equal to the solute particles separating out and a state of dynamic equilibrium is reached. Solute and Solvent Solution 2.10 At this stage the concentration of solute in solution will remain constant under the given conditions, i.e., temperature, and pressure. Similar process is followed when gases are dissolved in liquid solvents. Such a solution in which no more solute can be dissolved at the same temperature and pressure is called a saturated solution. An unsaturated solution is one in which more solute can be dissolved at the same temperature. The solution which is in dynamic equilibrium with undissolved solute is the saturated solution and contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved in a given amount of solvent. Thus, the concentration of solute in such a solution is its solubility. Earlier we have observed that solubility of one substance into another depends on the nature of the substances. In addition to these variables, two other parameters, i.e., temperature and pressure also control this phenomenon. Effect of temperature The solubility of a solid in a liquid is significantly affected by temperature changes. Consider the equilibrium represented by equation 2.10. This, being dynamic equilibrium, must follow L.E. Chatelier's principle. In general, if in a nearly saturated solution, the dissolution process is endothermic, sol H0, the solubility should increase with rise in temperature and if it is exothermic, Sol H0, the solubility should decrease. These trends are also observed experimentally. Effect of pressure Pressure does not have any significant effect on solubility of solids in liquids. It is so because solids and liquids are highly incompressible and practically remain unaffected by changes in pressure. Many gases dissolve in water. Oxygen dissolves only to a small extent in water. It is this dissolved oxygen which sustains all aquatic life. On the other hand, hydrogen chloride gas, HCl, is highly soluble in water. Solubility of gases in liquids is greatly affected by pressure and 2.3. Temperature. The solubility of gases increase with increase of pressure. For solution of gases in a solvent, Consider a system as shown in Fig 2.1, A. The lower part is solution and the upper part is gaseous system at pressure P and temperature T. Assume this system to be in a state of dynamic equilibrium, i.e., under these conditions rate of gaseous particles entering and leaving the solution phase is the same. Now increase the pressure over the solution phase by compressing the gas to a smaller volume Fig 2.1, B. This will increase the number of gaseous particles per unit volume over the solution and also the rate at which the gaseous particles are striking the surface of solution to enter it. The solubility of the gas will increase until a new equilibrium is reached resulting in an increase in the pressure of a gas above the solution and thus its solubility increases. Henry was the first to give a quantitative relation between pressure and solubility of a gas in a solvent which is known as Henry's Law. The law states that at a constant temperature, the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas present above the surface of liquid or solution. Dalton, a contemporary of Henry, also concluded independently that the solubility of a gas in a liquid solution is a function of partial pressure of the gas. If we use the mole fraction of a gas in the solution as a measure of its solubility, then it can be said that the mole fraction of gas in the solution is proportional to the partial pressure of the gas over the solution. The most commonly used form of Henry's law states that the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase, P, is proportional to the mole fraction of the gas, X, in the solution and is expressed as, P equals KHX, 2.11, here KH is the Henry's law constant. If we draw a graph between partial pressure of the gas versus mole fraction of the gas in solution, then we should get a plot of the type as shown in Fig 2.2.
different gases have different KH values at the same temperature, table 2.2. This suggests that KH is a function of the nature of the gas. It is obvious from equation, 2.11, that higher the value of KH at a given pressure, the lower is the solubility of the gas in the liquid. It can be seen from table 2.2 that KH values for both N2 and O2 increase with increase of temperature indicating that the solubility of gases fit. Increases with decrease of temperature. It is due to this reason that aquatic species are more comfortable in cold waters rather than in warm waters. Increases with decrease of temperature. It is due to this reason that aquatic species are more comfortable in cold waters rather than in warm waters. Henry's law finds several applications in industry and explains some biological phenomena. Notable among these are, to increase the solubility of CO2 in soft drinks and soda water, the bottle is sealed under high pressure. Scuba divers must cope with high concentrations of dissolved gases while breathing air at high pressure underwater. Increased pressure increases the solubility of atmospheric gases in blood. When the divers come towards surface, the pressure gradually decreases. This releases the dissolved gases and leads to the formation of bubbles of nitrogen in the blood. This blocks capillaries and creates a medical condition known as bends, which are painful and dangerous to life. If N2 gas is bubbled through water at 293 K, how many millimoles of N2 gas would dissolve in 1 liter of water? Assume that N2 exerts a partial pressure of 0.987 bar. Given that Henry's law constant for N2 at 293 K is 76.48 K bar, the solubility of gas is related to the mole fraction in aqueous solution. The mole fraction of the gas in the solution is calculated by applying Henry's law. Thus, X, nitrogen, equals H, nitrogen, pK equals 0.987 bar 76,480 bar equals 1.29 times 10 to 5 as 1 liter of water contains 55.5 mole of it, therefore if N represents number of moles of N2 in solution, X, nitrogen, equals mole mole 55.5 mole plus n n equals 55.5 n equals 1.29 times 10 to 5, n in denominator is neglected as it is 55.5, thus n equals 1.29 times 10 to 5 times 55.5 mole equals 7.16 times 10 to 4 mole equals 4 7.16 times 10 mole times 1000 mole 1 mole equals 0.716 mole ex complete To avoid bends, as well as, the toxic effects of high concentrations of nitrogen in the blood, the tanks used by scuba divers are filled with air diluted with helium, 11.7% helium, 56.2% nitrogen, and 32.1% oxygen. At high altitudes the partial pressure of oxygen is less than that at the ground level. This leads to low concentrations of oxygen in the blood and tissues of people living at high altitudes or climbers. Low blood oxygen causes climbers to become weak and unable to think clearly, symptoms of a condition known as anoxia. Effect of temperature solubility of gases in liquids decreases with rise in temperature. When dissolved, the gas molecules are present in liquid phase and the process of dissolution can be considered similar to condensation and heat is evolved in this process. We have learned in the last section that dissolution process involves dynamic equilibrium and thus must follow L.E. Chatelier's principle. As dissolution is an exothermic process, the solubility should decrease with increase of temperature. Liquid solutions are formed when solvent is a liquid. The solute can be a gas, a liquid or a solid. Solutions of gases in liquids have already been discussed in section 2.3.2. In this section, we shall discuss the solutions of liquids and solids in a liquid. Such solutions may contain one or more volatile components. Generally, the liquid solvent is volatile. The solute may or may not be volatile. We shall discuss the properties of only binary solutions, that is, the solutions containing two components, namely, 
the solutions of I, liquids in liquids and 2, solids in liquids. Let us consider a binary solution of two volatile liquids and denote the two components as 1 and 2. When taken in a closed vessel, both the components would evaporate and eventually an equilibrium would be established between vapor phase and the liquid phase. Let the total vapor pressure at this stage be total and P1 and P2 be the partial vapor pressures of the two components 1 and 2 respectively. These partial pressures are related to the mole fractions x1 and x2 of the two components 1 and 2 respectively. The French chemist, François Mart Réault, 1886, gave the quantitative relationship between them. The relationship is known as the Reault's law which states that for a solution of volatile liquids, 2244 2.4 2.4 2.4 vapor vapor P pre L like to S solo utayoans S solo utayoans solutions in text in text questions in text questions in text questions in text questions 2.6 H2S a toxic gas with rotten egg-like smell, is used for the qualitative analysis. If the solubility of H2S in water at STP is 0.195 m, calculate Henry's law constant. 2.7 Henry's law constant for CO2 in water is 1.67 x 108 pa at 298 k. Calculate the quantity of CO2 in 500 ml of soda water when packed under 2.5 atm CO2 pressure at 298 k. 2.4.1 The partial vapor pressure of each component of the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction present in solution. Thus, for component 1 P1X1 and P1 equals 0 1 PX1, 2.12, where 0 1 P is the vapor pressure of pure component 1 at the same temperature. Similarly, for component 2 P2 equals P20X2, 2.13, where P20 represents the vapor pressure of the pure component 2. According to Dalton's law of partial pressures, the total pressure, total P, over the solution phase in the container will be the sum of the partial pressures of the components of the solution and is given as, total equals P1 plus P2, 2.14, substituting the values of P1 and P2, we get total equals X1 P10 plus X2 P20 equals, 1, X2, P10 plus X2 P20, 2.15, equals P10 plus, P20, P10, X2, 2.16, following conclusions can be drawn from equation, 2.16. I, total vapor pressure over the solution can be related to the mole fraction of any one component. 2, total vapor pressure over the solution varies linearly with the mole fraction of component 2. 3, depending on the vapor pressures of the pure components 1 and 2, total vapor pressure over the solution decreases or increases with the increase of the mole fraction of component 1. A plot of P1 or P2 versus the mole fractions X1 and X2 for a solution gives a linear plot as shown in Fig 2.3. These lines, I and 2, pass through the points for which X1 and X2 are equal to unity. Similarly the plot, line 3, of total versus X2 is also linear, Fig 2.3. The minimum value of total is P10 and the maximum value is P20, assuming that component 1 is less volatile than component 2, i.e., P10 P20. The composition of vapor phase in equilibrium with the solution is determined by the partial pressures of the components. If Y1 and Y2 are the mole fractions of the Fig 2, Point 3, the plot of vapor pressure and mole fraction of an ideal solution at constant temperature. The dashed lines I and 2 represent the partial pressure of the components. It can be seen from the plot that P1 and P2 are directly proportional to X1 and X2, respectively. The total vapor pressure is given by line mark 3 in the figure. components 1 and 2 respectively in the vapor phase then, using Dalton's law of partial pressures, P1 equals Y1 total, 2.17, P2 
P2 equals Y2 total, 2.18, in general pi equals Y total, 2.19, vapor pressure of chloroform, CHCl3, and dichloromethane, CH2Cl2, at 298 K are 200 mm Hg and 415 mm Hg respectively. I. Calculate the vapor pressure of the solution prepared by mixing 25.5 G of CHCl3 and 40 G of CH2Cl2 at 298 K and 2. Mole fractions of each component in vapor phase. I. Molar mass of CH2Cl2 equals 12 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 35.5 times 2 equals 85 G mole. 1 molar mass of CHCl3 equals 12 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 35.5 times 3 equals 119.5 G mole. 1 moles of CH2Cl2 equals 140 G. 85 G mole equals 0.47 mole. Moles of CHCl3 equals 125.5 G. 119.5 G mole equals 0.213 mole. Total number of moles equals 0.47 plus 0.213 equals 0.2. 0.683 mole 22 CHCLX equals 0.47 mole 0.683 mole equals 0.6883 CHCLX equals 1.00 to 0.688 equals 0.312 using equation 2.16 total equals P10 plus P20 P10 X2 equals 200 plus 415 to 200 times 0 0.688 equals 200 plus 147.9 equals 347.9 millimeters hg 2 using the relation 2.19 y equals pi slash total we can calculate the mole fraction of the components in gas phase y 2 2 chclp equals 0 0.688 times 415 mm hg equals 285.5 mm hg 3 chclp equals 0 0.312 times 200 mm hg equals 62.4 mm hg 2 2 ch cli equals 285.5 mm hg slash 347.9 mm hg equals 0 0.823 ch cli equals 62 2.4 mm Hg slash 347.9 mm Hg equals 0.18 Note, since, CH2Cl2 is a more volatile component than CHCl3, 22 CHCl0 P equals 415 mm Hg and 3 CHCl0 P equals 200 mm Hg and the vapor phase is also richer in CH2Cl2 22 CH Cli equals 0.82 and 3 CH Cli equals 0.18. It may thus be concluded that at equilibrium, vapor phase will be always rich in the component which is more volatile. According to Reynolds' law, the vapor pressure of a volatile component in a given solution is given by pi equals 11 pi 0. In the solution of a gas in a liquid, one of the components is so volatile that it exists as a gas and we have already seen that its solubility is given by Henry's law which states that P equals KHx. If we compare the equations for Reynolds' law and Henry's law, it can be seen that the partial pressure of the volatile component or gas is directly proportional to its mole fraction in solution. Only the proportionality constant KH differs from P10. Thus, Reynolds' law becomes a special case of Henry's law in which KH becomes equal to P10. Another important class of solutions consists of solids dissolved in liquid, for example, sodium chloride, glucose, urea and cane sugar in water and iodine and sulfur dissolved in carbon disulfide. Some physical properties of these solutions are quite different from those of pure solvents. For example, vapor pressure. We have learned in Unit 5, Class 11, that liquids at a given temperature vaporize and under equilibrium conditions the pressure exerted by the vapors of the liquid over the liquid phase is called vapor pressure Fig 2.4. In a pure liquid the entire surface is occupied by the molecules of the liquid. If a non-volatile solute is added to a solvent to give a solution Fig 2.4, b, the vapor pressure of the solution is solely from the solvent alone. 
This vapor pressure of the solution at a given temperature is found to be lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at the same temperature. In the solution, the surface has both solute and solvent molecules, thereby the fraction of the surface covered by the solvent molecules gets reduced. Consequently, the number of solvent molecules escaping from the surface is correspondingly reduced, thus, the vapor pressure is also reduced. The decrease in the vapor pressure of solvent depends on the quantity of non-volatile solute present in the solution, irrespective of its nature. For example, decrease in the vapor pressure of water by adding 1.0 mole of sucrose to 1 kg of water is nearly similar to that produced by adding 1.0 mole of urea to the same quantity of water at the same temperature. Reault's law in its general form can be stated as, for any solution the partial vapor pressure of each volatile component in the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction. In a binary solution, let us denote the solvent by 1 and solute by 2. When the solute is non-volatile, only the solvent molecules are present in vapor phase and contribute to vapor pressure. Let P1 be 2.4.2 Reault's law as a special if we compare the equations for Reault's law and Henry's law, the vapor pressure of the solvent, x1 be its mole fraction, pi0 be its vapor pressure in the pure state. Then according to Reault's law p1x1 and p1 equals x101 p2.20, the proportionality constant is equal to the vapor pressure of pure solvent, 01 p. A plot between the vapor pressure and the mole fraction of the solvent is linear, fig 2.5. Liquid-liquid solutions can be classified into ideal and non-ideal solutions on the basis of Reault's law. The solutions which obey Reault's law over the entire range of concentration are known as ideal solutions. The ideal solutions have two other important properties. The enthalpy of mixing of the pure components to form the solution is zero and the volume of mixing is also zero, i.e., mix H equals zero, mix V equals zero, 2.21, it means that no heat is absorbed or evolved when the components are mixed. Also, the volume of solution would be equal to the sum of volumes of the two components. At molecular level, ideal behavior of the solutions can be explained by considering two components A and B. In pure components, the intermolecular attractive interactions will be of types AA and BB, whereas in the binary solutions in addition to these two interactions, AB type of interactions will also be present. If the intermolecular attractive forces between the AA and BB are nearly equal to those between AB, this leads to the formation of ideal solution. A perfectly ideal solution is rare but some solutions are nearly ideal in behavior. Solution of N-hexane and N-heptane, bromoethane and chloroethane, benzene and toluene, etc. fall into this category. When a solution does not obey Reault's law over the entire range of concentration, then it is called non-ideal solution. The vapor pressure of such a solution is either higher or lower than that predicted by Reault's law, equation 2.16. If it is higher, the solution exhibits positive deviation and if it is lower, it exhibits negative deviation from Reault's law. The plots of vapor pressure as a function of mole fractions for such solutions are shown in Fig 2.6. The cause for these deviations lie in the nature of interactions at the molecular level. In case of positive deviation from Reault's law, AB interactions are weaker than those between AA or BB, i.e., in this case the intermolecular attractive forces between the solute-solvent molecules are weaker than those between the solute-solute and solvent-solvent molecules. This means that in such solutions, molecules of A, or B, will find it easier to escape than in pure state. This will increase the vapor fig pressure and result in positive deviation. Mixtures of ethanol and acetone behave in this manner. In pure ethanol, molecules are hydrogen bonded. On adding acetone, 
its molecules get in between the host molecules and break some of the hydrogen bonds between them. Due to weakening of interactions, the solution shows positive deviation from Reult's law fig 2.6, A. In a solution formed by adding carbon disulfide to acetone, the dipolar interactions between solute-solvent molecules are weaker than the respective interactions among the solute-solute and solvent-solvent molecules. This solution also shows positive deviation. In case of negative deviations from Reult's law, the intermolecular attractive forces between AA and BB are weaker than those between AB and leads to decrease in vapor pressure resulting in negative deviations. An example of this type is a mixture of phenol and aniline. In this case the intermolecular hydrogen bonding between phenolic proton and lone pair on nitrogen atom of aniline is stronger than the respective intermolecular hydrogen bonding between similar molecules. Similarly, a mixture of chloroform and acetone forms a solution with negative deviation from Reult's law. This is because chloroform molecule is able to form hydrogen bond with acetone molecule as shown. This decreases the escaping tendency of molecules for each component and consequently the vapor pressure decreases resulting in negative deviation from Reult's law fig 2.6. b. Some liquids on mixing, form azeotropes which are binary mixtures having the same composition in liquid and vapor phase and boil at a constant temperature. In such cases, it is not possible to separate the components by fractional distillation. There are two types of azeotropes called minimum boiling azeotrope and maximum boiling azeotrope. The solutions which show a large positive deviation from Reult's law form minimum boiling azeotrope at a specific composition. For example, ethanol water mixture, obtained by fermentation of sugars, on fractional distillation gives a solution containing approximately 95% by volume of ethanol. Once this composition, known as a zeotrope composition, has been achieved, the liquid and vapor have the same composition, and no further separation occurs. The solutions that show large negative deviation from Reult's law form maximum boiling a zeotrope at a specific composition. Nitric acid and water is an example of this class of a zeotrope. This a zeotrope has the approximate composition, 68% nitric acid and 32% water by mass, with a boiling point of 393.5 K2266 2266 2.6 C coliajata IV C coliajata Properties and Properties and Properties and Determination deter Of molar mass of molar mass of molar mass of molar mass we have learned in section 2.4.3 that the vapor pressure of solution decreases when a non-volatile solute is added to a volatile solvent. There are many properties of solutions which are connected with this decrease of vapor pressure. These are, 1, relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent, 2, depression of freezing point of the solvent, 3, elevation of boiling point of the solvent and, 4, osmotic pressure of the solution. All these properties depend on the number of solute particles irrespective of their nature relative to the total number of particles present in the solution. Such properties are called colligative properties, colligative, from Latin, co means together, ligare means to bind. In the following sections we will discuss these properties one by one. We have learned in section 2.4.3 that the vapor pressure of a solvent in solution is less than that of the pure solvent. Reult established that the lowering of vapor pressure depends only on the concentration of the solute particles and it is independent of their identity. The equation, 2.20, given in section 2.4.3 establishes a relation between vapor pressure of the solution, mole fraction, and vapor pressure of the solvent, i.e., P1 equals X1 P10, 2.22, the reduction in the vapor pressure of solvent, P1, is given as, P1 equals P10, 
P1 equals P10, P10X1 equals P10, 1, X1, 2.23, knowing that X2 equals 1, X1, equation, 2.23, reduces to P1 equals X2 P10, 2.24, in a solution containing several non-volatile solutes, the lowering of the vapor pressure depends on the sum of the mole. Fraction of different solutes. Equation, 2.24, can be written as 101 pp equals 01101 ppp equals x2, 2.25, 2008. The expression on the left-hand side of the equation as mentioned earlier is called relative lowering of vapor pressure and is equal to the mole fraction of the solute. The above equation can be written as 01101 p pp equals 212 plus nnn2212 since equals plus nxnn 2.26. Here n1 and n2 are the number of moles of solvent and solute respectively present in the solution. For dilute solutions n2 n1. Hence neglecting N2 in the denominator we have 01101 ppp equals 21NN, 2.27, or 01101, ppp equals 2121W times times WMM, 2.28, here W1 and W2 are the masses and M1 and M2 are the molar masses of the solvent and solute respectively. From this equation, 2.28, knowing all other quantities, the molar mass of solute, M2, can be calculated. Example 2.6 Example 2.6 Example 2.6 Example 2.6 Example 2.6 The vapor pressure Bar Bar Example 2.6 The vapor pressure of pure benzene at a certain temperature is 0 0.850 bar. A non-volatile, non-electrolyte solid weighing 0.5 g when added to 39.0 g of benzene, molar mass 78 g mole 1. Vapor pressure of the solution, then, is 0.845 bar. What is the molar mass of the solid substance? The various quantities known to us are as follows, P10 equals 0.850 bar, P equals 0.845 bar, M1 equals 78 g mole. 1, W2 equals 0.5 G, W1 equals 39 G. Substituting these values in equation, 2.28, we get 0.850 bar, 0.845 bar, 0.850 bar equals 1 to 0.5 G times 78 G mole times 39 G M. Therefore, M2 equals 170 G mole, 1 we have learned in unit 5, class 11 that the vapor pressure of a liquid increases with increase of temperature. It boils at the temperature at which its vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. For example, water boils at 373.15 K, 100 degrees Celsius, because at this temperature the vapor pressure of water is 1.013 bar, 1 atmosphere. We have also learned in the last section that vapor pressure of the solvent decreases in the presence of non-volatile solute. Fig 2.7 depicts the variation of vapor pressure of the pure solvent and solution as a function of temperature. For example, the vapor pressure of an aqueous solution of sucrose is less than 1.013 bar at 373.15 K. In order to make this solution boil, its vapor pressure must be increased to 1.013 bar by raising the temperature above the boiling temperature of the pure solvent, water. Thus, the boiling two points point of a solution is always higher than that of the boiling point of the pure solvent in which the solution is prepared as shown in Fig 2.7. Similar to lowering of vapor pressure, the elevation of boiling point also depends on the number of solute molecules rather than their nature. A solution of 1 mole of sucrose in 1000 g of water boils at 373.52 K at 1 atmospheric pressure. Let 0 Bt be the boiling point of pure solvent and Bt be the boiling point of solution. The increase in the boiling point 0 BBB equals TTT is known as elevation of boiling point. Experiments have shown that for dilute solutions the elevation of boiling point, Tb, 
is directly proportional to the molal concentration of the solute in a solution. Thus TBM, 2.29, or TB equals KBM, 2.30, here M, molality, is the number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 kg of solvent and the constant of proportionality, KB is called boiling point elevation constant or molal elevation constant, ebullioscopic constant. The unit of KB is kkg mole 1. Values of KB for some common solvents are given in Table 2.3. If W2 gram of solute of molar mass M2 is dissolved in W1 gram of solvent, then molality, M of the solution is given by the expression, M equals 221 slash M slash 1000 WW equals 221 1000 times times M W 2.31, substituting the value of molality in equation, 2.30, we get TB equals B221 times 1000 times times K MWW M2 equals B1 1000 times 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 KTWW 2.33. Thus, in order to determine M2, molar mass of the solute, known mass of solute in a known mass of the solvent is taken and TB is determined experimentally for a known solvent whose KB value is known. 18G of glucose. C6H12O6, is dissolved in 1 kg of water in a saucepan. At what temperature will water boil at 1.013 bar? Kb for water is 0.52 kkg mole 1. Moles of glucose equals 18 g slash 180 g mole, 1 equals 0.1 mole number of kilograms of solvent equals 1 kilogram thus molality of glucose solution equals 0.1 mole kg 1 for water, Change in boiling point E F 1 equals 0.052 K since water boils. Since water T B equals KB times M equals 0.52 K kg mole, 1 times 0.1 mole kg, 1 equals 0.052 K since water boils at 373.15 K at 1.013 bar pressure, therefore, the boiling point of solution will be 373.15 plus 0.052 equals 373.202 K. The boiling point of benzene is 353.23 K. When 1.80 G of a non-volatile solute was dissolved in 90 G of benzene, the boiling point is raised to 354.11 K. Calculate the molar mass of the solute. Kb for benzene is 2.53 kkg mole, 1 the elevation, Tb, in the boiling point equals 354.11 k, 353. 23 k equals 0.88 k substituting these values in expression, 2.33, we get M2 equals 112.53 kkg mole times 1.8 g times 1000 g kg 0.88 k times 90 g equals 58 g mole, 1 therefore, molar mass of the solute, m2 equals 58 g mole, 1 fig 2.8, diagram showing tf, depression of the The lowering of vapor pressure of a solution causes a lowering of the freezing point compared to that of the pure solvent, fig 2.8. We know that at the freezing point of a substance, the solid phase is in dynamic equilibrium with the liquid phase. Thus, the freezing point of a substance may be defined as the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the substance in its liquid phase is equal to its vapor pressure in the solid phase. A solution will freeze when its vapor pressure equals the vapor pressure of the pure solid solvent as is clear from Fig 2.8. According to Reilt's law, when a non-volatile solid is added to the solvent its vapor pressure decreases and now it would become equal to that of solid solvent at lower temperature. Thus, the freezing point of the solvent decreases. Let zero feet be the freezing point of pure solvent and Ft be its freezing point when non-volatile solute is dissolved in it. The decrease in freezing point. Zero FFF equals TTT is known as depression in freezing point. Similar to elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point, TF, for dilute solution, ideal solution, is directly proportional to molality, M of the solution. Thus, TFM or TF equals KFM, 2.34, 
The proportionality constant, Kf, which depends on the nature of the solvent is known as freezing point depression constant or molar ex complete. Depression constant or cryoscopic constant. The unit of Kf is kkg mole 1. Values of Kf for some common solvents are listed in Table 2.3. If W2 gram of the solute having molar mass as M2, present in W1 gram of solvent, produces the depression in freezing point Tf of the solvent then molality of the solute is given by the equation, 2.31. M equals WW221 slash slash 1000 M, 2.31, substituting this value of molality in equation, 2.34, we get, TF equals F221 slash slash 1000 times KMWW TF equals F221 times times 1000 times KMWW, 2.35, M2 equals F2 F1 times times 1000 times KTWW, 2.36, thus for determining the molar mass of the solute we should know the quantities W1, W2, Tf, along with the molal freezing point depression constant. The values of Kf and Kb, which depend upon the nature of the solvent, can be ascertained from the following relations. Kf equals 2 1 F plus times times 1000 times RMTH, 2.37, KB equals 2 1 BVAP times times 1000 times RMTH, 2.38, here the symbols R and M1 stand for the gas constant and molar mass of the solvent, respectively and TF and TB denote the freezing point and the boiling point of the pure solvent respectively in Kelvin. Further, FUS H and VAP H represent the enthalpies for the fusion and vaporization of the solvent, respectively. Solvent BP slash KKB slash KKG mole 1 F 45 G of ethylene glycol, C2H602, is mixed with 600 G of water. Calculate, A, the freezing point depression and, B, the freezing point of the solution. Depression in freezing point is related to the molality, therefore, the molality of the solution with respect to ethylene glycol equals moles of ethylene glycol mass of water in kilogram moles of ethylene glycol equals 145 G 62 G mole equals 0.73 mole mass of water in kg equals 1600 G 1000 G kg equals 0.6 kilograms hence molality of ethylene glycol equals 0.73 mole 0.60 kilograms equals 1.2 mole kg, 1 therefore freezing point depression. ATF equals 1.86 kkg mole, 1 times 1.2 mole kg, 1 equals 2.2 k freezing point of the aqueous solution equals 273.15 k, 2.2 k equals 270.95 k 1.00 g of a non-electrolyte solute dissolved in 50 g of benzene lowered the freezing point of benzene by 0.40 k. The freezing point depression constant of benzene is 5.12 kkg mole, 1. Find the molar mass of the solute. Substituting the values of various terms involved in equation, 2.36, we get, M2 equals 115.12 kkg mole times 1.00 g times 1000 g kg 0.40 times 50 g equals 256 g mole 1 thus, Molar mass of the solute equals 256 g mole 1 example 2.9 example 2.9 example Fig 2.9 level of solution rises in the thistle funnel due to osmosis of solvent. 45 g of ethylene glycol, C2H602, is mixed with 6 Any phenomena which we observe in nature or at home. There are many phenomena which we observe in nature or at home. For example, raw mangoes shrivel when pickled in brine, salt water, wilted flowers revive when placed in fresh water, blood cells collapse when suspended in saline water, etc. If we look into these processes we find one thing common in all, that is, all these substances are bound by membranes. These membranes can be of animal or vegetable origin and these occur naturally such as pig's bladder or parchment or can be synthetic such as cellophane. 
These membranes appear to be continuous sheets or films, yet they contain a network of submicroscopic holes or pores. Small solvent S. solutio and molecules, like water, can pass through these holes but the passage of bigger molecules like solute is hindered. Membranes having this kind of properties are known as semi-permeable membranes, SPM. Assume that only solvent molecules can pass through these semi-permeable membranes. If this membrane is placed between the solvent and solution as shown in Fig 2.9, the solvent molecules will flow through the membrane from pure solvent to the solution. This process of flow of the solvent is called osmosis. The flow will continue till the equilibrium is attained. The flow of the solvent from its side to solution side across a semi-permeable membrane can be stopped if some extra pressure is applied on the solution. This pressure that just stops the flow of solvent is called osmotic pressure of the solution. The flow of solvent from dilute solution to the concentrated solution across a semi-permeable membrane is due to osmosis. The important point to be kept in mind is that solvent molecules always flow from lower concentration to higher concentration of solution. The osmotic pressure has been found to depend on the concentration of the solution. The osmotic pressure of a solution is the excess pressure that must be applied to a solution to prevent osmosis, i.e., to stop the passage of solvent molecules through a semi-permeable membrane into the solution. This is illustrated in Fig 2.10. Osmotic pressure is a colligative property as it depends on the number of solute molecules and not on their identity. For dilute solutions, it has been found experimentally that osmotic pressure is proportional to the molarity, C of the solution at a given temperature T. Thus, pi equals CRT, 2.39, here pi is the osmotic pressure and R is the gas constant. Pi equals, N2 slash V, RT, 2.40, here V is volume of a solution in liters containing N2 moles of solute. If W2 grams of solute, of molar mass, M2 is present in the solution, then N2 equals W2 slash M2 and we can write, pi V equals 2 2 WRT M, 2.41, or M2 equals 2 WRT V, 2.42, thus, knowing the quantities W2, T, pi and V we can calculate the molar mass of the solute. Measurement of osmotic pressure provides another method of determining molar masses of solutes. This method is widely used to determine molar masses of proteins, polymers, and other macromolecules. The osmotic pressure method has the advantage over other methods as pressure measurement is around the room temperature and the molarity of the solution is used instead of molality. As compared to other colligative properties, its magnitude is large even for very dilute solutions. The technique of osmotic pressure for determination of molar mass of solutes is particularly useful for biomolecules as they are generally not stable at higher temperatures and polymers have poor solubility. Two solutions having same osmotic pressure at a given temperature are called isotonic solutions. When such solutions are separated by semi-permeable membrane no osmosis occurs between them. For example, the osmotic pressure associated with the fluid inside the blood cell is equivalent to that of 0.9%, mass-slash-volume, sodium chloride solution, called normal saline solution and it is safe to inject intravenously. On the other hand, if we place the cells in a solution containing more than 0.9%, mass-slash-volume, sodium chloride, water will flow out of the cells and they would shrink. Such a solution is called hypertonic. If the salt concentration is less than 0.9%, mass slash volume, the solution is said to be hypotonic. In this case, water will flow into the cells if placed in this solution and they would swell. 200 cubic centimeters of an aqueous solution of a protein contains 1.26 g of the protein. The osmotic pressure of such a solution at 300 K is found to be 2.57 times 10 to 3 bar. Calculate the molar mass of the protein. The various quantities known to us are as follows, pi equals 2.57 times 10 to 3 bar, 
V equals 200 cubic centimeters equals 0 0.200 liter T equals 300 KR equals 0.083 L bar mole 1 K1 substituting these values in equation 2.42 we get M2 equals 1131.26 G times 0.083 L bar K mole times 300 K 2.57 times 10 bar times 0.200 L equals 61,022 G mole 1 EX sample 22 11 11 EX sample 20 56 chemistry macromolecules The osmotic mentioned in the beginning of this section can be ex explained on the basis of osmosis. A raw solution the phenomena mentioned in the beginning of this section can be explained on the basis of osmosis. A raw mango placed in concentrated salt solution loses water via osmosis and shrivel into pickle. Wilted flowers revive when placed in fresh water. A carrot that has become limp because of water loss into the atmosphere can be placed into the water making it firm once again. Water will move into its cells through osmosis. When placed in water containing less than 0.9%, mass slash volume, salt, blood cells swell due to flow of water in them by osmosis. People taking a lot of salt or salty food experience water retention in tissue cells and intercellular spaces because of osmosis. The resulting 2000 puffiness or swelling is called edema. Water movement from soil into plant roots and subsequently into upper portion of the plant is partly due to osmosis. The preservation of meat by salting and of fruits by adding sugar protects against bacterial action. Through the process of osmosis, a bacterium on salted meat or candied fruit loses water, shrivels and dies. The direction of osmosis can be reversed if a pressure larger than the osmotic pressure is applied to the solution side. That is, now the pure solvent flows out of the solution through the semi-permeable membrane. This phenomenon is called reverse osmosis and is of great practical utility. Reverse osmosis is used in desalination of sea water. A schematic setup for the process is shown in Fig 2.11. When pressure more than osmotic pressure is applied, pure water is squeezed out of the sea water through the membrane. A variety of polymer membranes are available for this purpose. The pressure required for the reverse osmosis is quite high. A workable porous membrane is a film of cellulose acetate placed over a suitable support. Cellulose acetate is permeable to water but impermeable to impurities and ions present in sea water. These days many countries use desalination plants to meet their potable water requirements membrane. This phenomenon is called reverse osmosis and is of great pure water at 298 K is 23.8 mm Hg 50 G of urea, NH2CO NH2, is dissolved in 850 G of water. Calculate the vapor pressure of water for this solution and its relative lowering. 2.10 boiling point of water at 750 mm Hg is 99.63 degrees Celsius. How much sucrose is to be added to 500 g of water such that it boils at 100 degrees Celsius? 2.11 calculate the mass of ascorbic acid, vitamin C, C6H8O6, to be dissolved in 75 g of acetic acid to lower its melting point by 1.5 degrees Celsius. Kf equals 3.9 kkg mole 1. 2.12 Calculate the osmotic pressure in pascals exerted by a solution prepared by dissolving 1.0 g of polymer of molar mass 185,000 in 450 ml of water at 37 degrees Celsius. We know that ionic compounds when dissolved in water dissociate into cations and anions. For example, if we dissolve 1 mole of KCl, 74.5 g in water we expect one mole each of k and and cl ions to be released in the solution if this happens there would be two moles of particles in the solution if we ignore interionic attractions one mole of kcl in one kg of water would be expected to increase the boiling point by two times 0.52 k equals 1.04 k now if we did not know about the degree of 20 
2 ch 3 coh ch 3 coh 2 dissociation, we could be led to conclude that the mass of 2 mole particles is 74.5 g and the mass of 1 mole of KCl would be 37.25 g. This brings into light the rule that, when there is dissociation of solute into ions, the experimentally determined molar mass is always lower than the true value. Molecules of ethanoic acid, acetic acid, dime rise in benzene due to hydrogen bonding. This normally happens in solvents of low dielectric constant. In this case the number of particles is reduced due to dimerization. Association of molecules is depicted as follows, it can be undoubtedly stated here that if all the molecules of ethanoic acid associate in benzene, then Tb or Tf4 ethanoic acid will be half of the normal value. The molar mass calculated on the basis of this Tb or Tf will, therefore, be twice the expected value. Such a molar mass that is either lower or higher than the expected or normal value is called as abnormal molar mass. In 1880 Van T. Hoff introduced a factor I, known as the Van T. Hoff factor, to account for the extent of dissociation or association. This factor I is defined as, normal molar mass abnormal molar mass equals I observed colligative property calculated colligative property equals total number of moles of particles after association slash dissociation number of moles of particles before association slash dissociation equals I here abnormal molar mass is the experimentally determined molar mass and calculated colligative properties are obtained by assuming that the nonvolatile solute is neither associated nor dissociated. In case of association, value of I is less than unity while for dissociation it is greater than unity. For example, the value of I for aqueous KCl solution is close to 2, while the value for ethanoic acid in benzene is nearly 0.5. Inclusion of Van T. Hoff factor modifies the equations for colligative properties as follows, relative lowering of vapor pressure of solvent, O112011, equals PPNINP elevation of boiling point, Tb equals IKBM depression of freezing point, Tf equals IKFM osmotic pressure of solution, pi equals IN2RT slash V2018-19. to 2G of benzoic acid, C6H5COOH, depicts values of the table 2.4 depicts values of the factor, I for several strong electrolytes. For KCl, NaCl, and MgSO4, I values approach 2 as the solution becomes very dilute. As expected, the value of I gets close to 3 for K2SO4. Salt asterisk values of I van T. Hoff factor I for complete 0.1 M 0.01 M 0.001 M dissociation of solute NaCl 1.87 1.941.972.00 .00 KCl 1.851.941.982.00 MgSO4 1.211.531.822.00 K2SO4 2.322.702.843 3.00 asterisk 2G of benzoic acid, C6H5COOH, dissolved in 25G of benzene shows a depression in freezing point equal to 1.62 kmol depression constant for benzene is 4.9 kkg mol, 1. What is the percentage association of acid if it forms dimer in solution? The given quantities are, W2 equals 2G, KF equals 4.9 kkg mole, 1, W1 equals 25G, TF equals 1.62K. Substituting these values in equation, 2.36, we get, M2 equals 114.9 kkg mole times 2G times 1000 gkg 25G times 1.62K equals 241.98 g mole, 1 thus, Experimental molar mass of benzoic acid in benzene is equals 241.98 g mole. 1. Now consider the following equilibrium for the acid 2C6H5COOH, C6H5COOH, 2. If x represents the degree of association of the solute, then we would have 1. x, mole of benzoic acid left in unassociated form and 
correspondingly 2x as associated moles of benzoic acid at equilibrium. Therefore, total number of moles of particles at equilibrium is 1122 plus equals xxx thus, total number of moles of particles at equilibrium equals van t Hoff factor i. But normal molar mass abnormal molar mass equals i. Example 2.13 Example 2.13 Example 2.13 Example 2.13 Example 2.13 equals 11122 gmol 241.98 gmol or 2x equals 122110.5040.496241.98 equals equals or x equals 2 times 0 0.496 equals 0 0.992 therefore degree of association of benzoic acid in benzene is 99.2%. 0.6 ml of acetic acid, CH3COOH, having density 1.06 gml, 1, is dissolved in 1 liter of water. The depression in freezing point observed for the strength of acid was 0.0205 degrees Celsius. Calculate the Van T. Hoff factor and the dissociation constant of acid. Number of moles of acetic acid equals 110.6 ml 1.06 gml 60 g mole times equals 0.0106 mole equals n molality equals 10.0106 mole 1000 ml 1 gml times equals 0.0106 mole kg 1 using equation 2.35 tf equals 1.86 kkg mole 1 times 0.0106 mole kg 1 equals 0.0197 K Van T. Hoff factor, I, equals observed freezing point calculated freezing point equals 0.0205 K 0.0197 K equals 1.041 Acetic acid is a weak electrolyte and will dissociate into two ions, acetate and hydrogen ions per molecule of acetic acid. If X is the degree of dissociation of acetic acid, then we would have N, 1, X, moles of undissociated acetic acid, nx moles of ch 3 q and nx moles of H plus ions, plus plus 3 3 ch COOH H ch q mole 0 0 mole mole 1 n n n x n x x thus total moles of particles are, n, 1, x plus x plus x, equals n, 1 plus x, 111.041 plus equals equals plus equals n x i x n thus degree of dissociation of acetic acid equals x equals 1.041 1.000 equals 0 0.041 then ch3 cooh equals n 1 x equals 0 0.0106 1 to 0 0.041 ch3 q equals nx equals 0 0.0106 times 0 0.041, h plus equals nx equals 0 0.0106 times 0 0.041. Ka equals 3 3 plus CH QH CH COOH equals 0 0.0106 times 0 0.041 times 0 0.0106 times 0 0.0410.0106, 1.000.041. E S. Suamayaru summary A solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Solutions are classified as solid, liquid, and gaseous solutions. The concentration of a solution is expressed in terms of mole fraction, molarity, molality, and in percentages. The dissolution of a gas in a liquid is governed by Henry's law, according to which, at a given temperature, the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas. The vapor pressure of the solvent is lowered by the presence of a non-volatile solute in the solution and this lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent is governed by Reult's law, according to which the relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent over a solution is equal to the mole fraction of a non-volatile solute present in the solution. However, in a binary liquid solution, if both the components of the solution are volatile then another form of Reult's law is used. Mathematically, this form of the Reult's law is stated as, 0, 0 total 1, 2, 2, 1 equals plus PPXPX. Solutions which obey Reult's law over the entire range of concentration are called ideal solutions. 
Two types of deviations from Reult's law, called positive and negative deviations are observed. Azeotropes arise due to very large deviations from Reult's law. The properties of solutions which depend on the number of solute particles and are independent of their chemical identity are called colligative properties. These are lowering of vapor pressure, elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point and osmotic pressure. The process of osmosis can be reversed if a pressure higher than the osmotic pressure is applied to the solution. Colligative properties have been used to determine the molar mass of solutes. Solutes which dissociate in solution exhibit molar mass lower than the actual molar mass and those which associate show higher molar mass than their actual values. Quantitatively, the extent to which a solute is dissociated or associated can be expressed by Van T. Hoff factor I. This factor has been defined as ratio of normal molar mass to experimentally determined molar mass or as the ratio of observed colligative property to the calculated colligative property. 2.1 Define the term solution. How many types of solutions are formed? Write briefly about each type with an example. 2.2 Give an example of a solid solution in which the solute is a gas. 2.3 Define the following terms, I, mole fraction, 2, molality, 3, molarity, 4, mass percentage. 2.4 Concentrated nitric acid used in laboratory work is 68% nitric acid by mass in aqueous solution. What should be the molarity of such a sample of the acid if the density of the solution is 1.504 gml? 1. 2.5 A solution of glucose in water is labeled as 10% W slash W. What would be the molality and mole fraction of each component in the solution? If the density of solution is 1.2 gml, 1, then what shall be the molarity of the solution? 2.6 How many ml of 0.1 mhcl are required to react completely with 1 g mixture of Na2CO3 and NaHCO3 containing equimolar amounts of both? 2.7 A solution is obtained by mixing 300 g of 25% solution and 400 g of 40% solution by mass. Calculate the mass percentage of the resulting solution. 2.8 An antifreeze solution is prepared from 222.6 g of ethylene glycol, C2H6O2, and 200 g of water. Calculate the molality of the solution. If the density of the solution is 1.072 gml, 1, then what shall be the molarity of the solution? 2.9 A sample of drinking water was found to be severely contaminated with chloroform, CHCl3, supposed to be a carcinogen. The level of contamination was 15 ppm, by mass, I, express this in percent by mass, 2, Determine the molality of chloroform in the water sample 2.10 What role does the molecular interaction play in a solution of alcohol and water? 2.11 Why do gases always tend to be less soluble in liquids as the temperature is raised? 2.12 State Henry's law and mention some important applications 2.13 The partial pressure of ethane over a solution containing 6.56 times 10 to 3 g of ethane is 1 bar. If the solution contains 5.00 times 10 to 2 g of ethane, then what shall be the partial pressure of the gas? 2.14 What is meant by positive and negative deviations from Reult's law and how is the sign of mix H related to positive and negative deviations from Reult's law? 2.15 An aqueous solution of 2% nonvolatile solute exerts a pressure of 1.004 bar at the normal boiling point of the solvent. What is the molar mass of the solute? 2.16 Heptane and octane form an ideal solution. At 373 K, the vapor pressures of the two liquid components are 105.2 kPa and 46.8 kPa respectively. What will be the vapor pressure of a mixture of 26.0 g of heptane and 35 g of octane? 2.17 The vapor pressure of water is 12.3 kPa at 300 K. Calculate vapor pressure of one molal solution of a nonvolatile solute in it. 2.18 Calculate the mass of a nonvolatile solute, molar mass 40 g mole, 1, 
which should be dissolved in 114 g octane to reduce its vapor pressure to 80 percent. 2.19 A solution containing 30 g of non-volatile solute exactly in 90 g of water has a vapor pressure of 2.8 kPa at 298 k. Further, 18 g of water is then added to the solution and the new vapor pressure becomes 2.9 kPa at 298 k. Calculate, I, molar mass of the solute, 2, vapor pressure of water at 298 k 2.20 A 5% solution, by mass, of cane sugar in water has freezing point of 271 k. Calculate the freezing point of 5% glucose in water if freezing point of pure water is 273.15 K 2.212 elements A and B form compounds having formula of 2 and of 4. When dissolved in 20 G of benzene, C6H6, 1 G of of 2 lowers the freezing point by February 3 K whereas 1.0 G of of 4 lowers it by January 3 K. The molar depression constant for benzene is 5.1 kkg mole, 1. Calculate atomic masses of A and B 2018 to 19. 2.22 at 300 k, 36 g of glucose present in a liter of its solution has an osmotic pressure of 4.98 bar. If the osmotic pressure of the solution is 1.52 bars at the same temperature, what would be its concentration? 2.23 suggests the most important type of intermolecular attractive interaction in the following pairs. I, N-hexane and N-octane, 2, I2 and CCl4, 3, NACLO4 and water, 4, methanol and acetone, V, acetonitrile, CH3CN, and acetone, C3H6O. 2.24 Based on solute-solvent interactions, arrange the following in order of increasing solubility in N-octane and explain. Cyclohexane, KCl, CH3O, CH3CN. 2.25 Amongst the following compounds, identify which are insoluble, partially soluble, and highly soluble in water. I, phenol, 2, toluene, 3, formic acid, 4, ethylene glycol, V, chloroform, 6, pentanol. 2.26 If the density of some lake water is 1.25 gml, 1 and contains 92 g of Na and ions per kg of water, calculate the molality of Na and ions in the lake. 2.27 If the solubility product of Cus is 6 times 10 to 16, calculate the maximum molarity of Cus in aqueous solution. 2.28 Calculate the mass percentage of aspirin, C9H8O4, in acetonitrile, CH3CN, when 6.5 G of C9H8O4 is dissolved in 450 G of CH3CN. 2.29 Nalorphine, C19H21 NO3, similar to morphine, is used to combat withdrawal symptoms in narcotic users. Dose of nalorphine generally given is 1.5 mg. Calculate the mass of 1.5, 10 to 3 m aqueous solution required for the above dose. 2.30 Calculate the amount of benzoic acid, C6H5COOH, required for preparing 250 ml of 0.15 m solution in methanol. 2.31 The depression in freezing point of water observed for the same amount of acetic acid trichloroacetic acid and trifluorostic acid increases in the order given above. Explain briefly. 2.32 Calculate the depression in the freezing point of water when 10 g of CH3CH2 chlco is added to 250 g of water. Ka equals 1.4 times 10 to 3, Kf equals 1.86 kkg mole, 1. 2.3319.5 g of CH2 FCO is dissolved in 500 g of water. The depression in the freezing point of water observed is 1.00 c. Calculate the Van T. Hoff factor and dissociation constant of fluorostic acid. 2.34 Vapor pressure of water at 293 k is 17.535 mm hg. Calculate the vapor pressure of water at 293 k when 25 g of glucose is dissolved in 450 g of water. 
2.35 Henry's law constant for the molality of methane in benzene at 298 K is 4.27 times 105 mm Hg Calculate the solubility of methane in benzene at 298 K under 760 mm Hg 2.36 100 G of liquid A, molar mass 140 G mole, 1, was dissolved in 1000 G of liquid B, molar mass 180 G mole, 1. The vapor pressure of pure liquid B was found to be 500 torr. Calculate the vapor pressure of pure liquid A and its vapor pressure in the solution if the total vapor pressure of the solution is 475 torr. 2018 to 19. 2.37 vapor pressures of pure acetone and chloroform at 328 K are 741.8 mm Hg and 632.8 mm Hg respectively. Assuming that they form ideal solution over the entire range of composition, plot total, chloroform, and paste tone as a function of zacetone. The experimental data observed for different compositions of mixture is, 100x zacetone 011.823.436.050.858.264.572.1 paste tone slash mm chloro plot this data also on the same graph paper indicate whether it has positive deviation or negative deviation from the ideal solution 2.38 benzene and toluene form ideal solution over the entire range of composition the vapor pressure of pure benzene and toluene at 300 K are 50.71 mm Hg and 32.06 mm Hg respectively. Calculate the mole fraction of benzene in vapor phase if 80 G of benzene is mixed with 100 G of toluene. 2.39 The air is a mixture of a number of gases. The major components are oxygen and nitrogen with approximate proportion of 20% is to 79% by volume at 298 K. The water is in equilibrium with air at a pressure of 10 atm. At 298 K if the Henry's law constants for oxygen and nitrogen at 298 K are 3.30 times 107 mm and 6.51 times 107 mm respectively, Calculate the composition of these gases in water. 2.40 Determine the amount of CaCl2, I equals 2.47, dissolved in 2.5 liter of water such that its osmotic pressure is 0.75 atm at 27 degrees Celsius. 2.41 Determine the osmotic pressure of a solution prepared by dissolving 25 milligrams of K2SO4 in 2 liter of water at 25 degrees Celsius assuming that it is completely dissociated. Answers to some in-text questions 2.1 C6H6 equals 15.28%, CCL4 equals 84.72%, 0. 64 Chemistry 2.37 Vapor Pressure